Hi and welcome to the first in-lab session with me, Becky. So I'm going to show you a very simple project to begin with and that is creating this 2D slot together tablet holder. Not only could you use it as a tablet holder, you could use it to rest your cookbook on in the kitchen, you could use it as a manual holder, whatever it is, it's real simple to make and we're going to show you how to do that today. Not only that, we've also created a variation on the design that we are providing uh, for you to download and cut yourself where we've created these rather funky looking vein holders. Right then, so let's get to it. Okay, so let's just take a couple of minutes to have a look at the file and the software. So over on the right hand side you can see we have the main part for our tablet holder and this is 10 inches high by 8 inches wide. I have a series of vectors here that represent areas that we're just going to completely pocket away to create holes purely just from a design point of view just to give it a little bit of an edge. At the bottom we have a slot hole here and a slot hole there. Now the slots are created by using the draw rectangle tool. So we used a rectangle to draw the slots originally, one inches wide. The height of that is the same as the material thickness. So if you're planning on creating your own tablet book holder, you want to make sure that you alter the height of your slot hole so that it matches the material thickness that you plan to use. Okay, so one inch wide, 0.475 high, put some fillets in there so that my tool can cut the overall slot out and then created a mirrored copy over to the right hand side. Then I drew up the stand part, so this area here that you can see at the bottom is where we will rest our tablet, our book, our magazines, whatever it is in this area here. Uh, and then we've got our legs for our part to slot into these holes. So the width of each one of these legs is the exact width of our slot, which is one inch. So we can just check that the part fits like so by just lining that up and we can see that's going to fit nicely in there. Okay, So we've got uh, three quarters of an inch for the actual stand. How do I know how long I'm meant to draw each of these legs? So how I did that, I basically uh, drew the part as if I was looking at it side on. So you can see I've got this layer here called side profile and if we just switch that on and if we just zoom in on this area here you can see I've got a rectangle that is 10 inches high by 4.75 again that's my material thickness and then here I have another piece here and so this is actually positioned one inch from the bottom so if I take my measure tool go up there we can see the distance from the bottom to uh, our first slot hole is one inches which is the same as this distance here okay so you can see that's one inch there as well so all I did then was I drew in that rectangle in that position so the height of it again is our material thickness made sure that we had three quarters of an inch sticking out and then in order for me to determine the actual length of the stand what I did was I put it at an angle that I felt uh, would work best so I took everything here and I thought a sort of 70 degree angle would look nice. It's probably um, practical as well at 70 degrees. So with that I went into my rotation tool and I basically put in negative 20 degrees. Okay, so going at 70 degrees that's negative 20 and then I just hit apply so you can see how that would look. And I'll just take the bottom point and just line it up to this line here. So this line represents zero, it represents the surface that I plan to put our stand on. 
Now with that, you can see here with the actual stand, this part here, I'm going to take that rectangle, go into node edit mode, I'm just going to take those nodes here, and then using my smart cursor, you can see I'm just going to follow that along along that line until I hit a contact point which is here so I'm actually snapping to that point there and you can see it's completely at zero there which is perfect so that's how I determined how long that part was going to be and then I simply took both of those vectors back to the rotate tool send it back 20 degrees press apply and then I took this rectangle, looked at the measurement and you can see at the bottom there I have a width of 3.9726 and therefore I basically drew my stand legs so that it also had a height of 3.9726 in there. So let's just switch that off and we'll just press F to fit that to our screen. So we spoke about the main body of our tablet holder, we spoke about the stand and how we've got the correct measurements, how everything's going to slot together. You can also see here I have four extra slots and the reason for that is that we're going to use these slots um, just as test pieces. So we're going to cut this out first and after that we're going to cut out four different slots. Uh, the first one just as it is. The second one we're going to apply a negative um, allowance to it so we're essentially over cutting it and then as we move on to each one we're just applying a bigger allowance and the whole reason for this is that we can then take this off of the machine, we can take our part and test um, how well this fits in best to each of these slot holes and we'll talk more about this later on in the video. The whole point of this is that we basically get our test fit correct so that we can alter the slots on the actual main part so we can then cut uh, our finished part out knowing we have the correct uh, allowance for the perfect fit so that we don't waste uh, any time or material. Right, and so we've got our material, just standard ply, so it's 12mm, 0.475 inches, and we're going to cut this out using a quarter inch end mill. So I've raided our end mill tool, and I've got three different tools, okay, so they're all different. One is a upward cutter, one is a downward cutter, and then the other one is a compression tool, and we'll talk about that shortly. Here's a tablet holder that I made earlier and I cut this out using a downward cutter. Okay, so what's happening here, tool is forcing everything down as it's cutting through. So you can see that the top layer of our tablet holder has a nice finish because everything's being pushed down. Uh, but the downside of that is because we are pushing everything down, we're forcing the bottom layer out which makes this rather nasty looking splintering effect, okay? So you can see where uh, the material's actually been lifted and it's splintering, which is not really a good look. So how to avoid this? Well, we're going to look at using this little baby here. So this is a compression cutter. So it has both down and upward flutes. So the majority of our part is actually cutting down. Uh, which is good for the top surface, it knocks everything down to give a nice finish. As the tool gets to the bottom, it's actually cutting everything upwards. So the bottom surface of our material is being lifted up, so we don't get this splintering effect. Now, because we are using a compression cutter, what we want to make sure is that the upward cut of the bottom of the tool doesn't lift up the top surface of our material. So the way we're going to avoid this is by introducing ramps and leads into our profile toolpaths. Now because we are using a compression cutter, I'm just going to apply a few advanced options to our toolpaths to ensure that we get the best quality cut that we can. So we're going to take the stand to begin with and you can see here I've created a toolpath called Profile Base. 
Okay, so in here it's just a standard uh, 2D profile toolpath. We've got a cut depth just a little bit larger than my material thickness, so 0 0.485, so that's just to ensure that we uh, definitely cut all the way through our material thickness. The tool we're using is a quarter inch end mill, and we can see that's going to cut that in four passes. Okay, now this is the crucial thing that I need to look at here. So if we go into the edit passes option, and so here we can see the software has just divided our passes up according to our tool pass depth, which is an eighth of an inch. Now, the tool that I'm using, the compression tool, the actual upward part of our tool has a length of 3 sixteenths, okay? So I want to make sure that we uh, apply that plus a little bit extra so that we're then cutting downwards and we're not actually using the upward part of the tool on uh, the top surface of our material next to our finished part. So for our first pass I'm actually going to input uh, the 3 16 so we'll do 3 divided by 16 equals which you can see is 0.1875 and I'm going to add a little bit onto that so I'm just practically going to round that up to 0.2 and then we'll press apply there. Then for my next pass, I'm just basically going to use this uh, point 0.2 value from our last uh, pass depth plus uh, the pass depth of the tool, so 0.125 equals, and then we'll apply that. And we'll do the same for this one here. So here, 0 0.325 from where we left off, plus the 0.125, which is our pass depth of the tool, equals 0.45, apply that. And then we've just got uh, a small pass at the bottom there. So idea here is our first pass, we want to make sure that the tool uh, goes down further than the actual upward cut length just so that we ensure that the top surface of our material is downward cutting and to help us out with this we're actually going to apply uh, leads and ramps to ensure that we don't um, have the upward part of the tool on the top surface uh, affecting the sort of finished part of our stand. So that's the pass step done, so let's just OK that. OK, so working our way down the form, we're going to machine the vectors outside. Uh, further down, we're going to apply a separate last pass. Okay, so we're going to put in a small allowance of 0 0.02 in there. So what that means is we're going to cut all of our passes 0 0.02 away from our vector. And then for the last and final pass, we're going to come right in at the vector full length uh, to cut the parts out. And again, this is just again for good measure. We are using a compression cutter and this should give us a real nice uh, clean finish um, on both sides and all parts of uh, the actual part itself. Moving on down, we're going to add tabs to the toolpath, so I've specified the length and thickness in there. Feel free to alter the position of those. And then at the bottom, again, because we are using that compression cutter, I'd like to apply um, a lead in. So we're going to use a circular lead, so the toolpath will start further out and then it will lead in. And with that lead, I want to actually ramp that in to the depth of our first pass. So once it gets to nearer to the actual part uh, we're at that depth where we're actually cutting downwards so we're not going to uh, destroy the sort of top uh, layer or laminate of our material because we are working with ply here. Okay, so with all of that, we simply calculate that and apply the same uh, settings for all of the other profiles that we're using. So let's go ahead and calculate that. Just OK that message. So you can see we've got our lead in with the ramp. So it's coming down at the thickness there. And then it will cut the part out. So let's just preview that. So you can see that there. And that's how our part will look. Safety first. Right then. So we've got our tool pass ready, machine set up. Let's turn around.
and so we've cut our first test piece. Uh, so the point of this is to take our finished stand part of our tablet holder, so it's this part here, and we just want to ensure that we get a nice fit in the slots. So I've created four different slots, all with different negative allowances, and we're just going to see what fits best. And so we've got our stand piece, I took it out of our parts, give it a nice sand up so you can see we've got a nice finish to the top side as is the bottom side so you can see we've got no splinter in there whatsoever and again that's all down to the fact that we use that compression tool along with applying a ramp, a lead and a last pass allowance in our profile pass. Right then, so the whole point of this is we want to check the fit that our part can slot into these holes. We're just going to test the snugness of each one of those. Now the difference between each one of these holes is uh, some of these have extra sort of cuts. We've applied a negative allowance. We're just overcutting it just to see how well this can fit inside. This one has no allowance whatsoever. So when we try and fit this in, because the width of the slot is the same as our material thickness, you can see we're really struggling to get that in there because it's the exact same measurement. And that's the reason why we need to apply negative allowances just to overcut so we get a nice snug fit. So here I've applied a negative allowance of 0.01 and if we just pop that in there you can see we do actually have quite ni a nice uh, snug fit there. It's not too tight, it's not too loose. So I could think about using this one. This one we've done at 0.015 and if I just pop this side in, you can see it's quite loose, not too bad, however there's quite a little bit of give there so that may be too much. And then this one was done at 0.02 and again you can see that is, uh, there is a lot of give in there, that wouldn't be very practical. So I'm going to go with that negative 0.01, nice snug fit and it's a good job that we did a test piece because that saves me with all my material uh, and that I'm not wasting it when we come to run the actual finished pass. Right then, so let's go and cut our final part. Right, and so here we have our finished tablet holder. So you can see the bottom of our part fits snug into our slot holes where we looked at using the various allowances to get a nice snug fit in there. We've got a beautiful finish on the top as is the bottom. And again, that's all down to the fact that we use that compression cutter. If you're wanting to cut this yourself, you can find the project on our labs page using the link below and you can download the files from there. Uh, feel free to give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and I'll be seeing you again on our next in-lab session with Becky. Cheerio!